you see that on live scope? Uh, I think we just went over a car in live scope. Like I just saw like the the bumper. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you, dude. I swear to God. We are back, Lake of Ozarks, in search of Donald Lee Irwin, also known as Donnie, to all of his family and friends here in this community. Donnie went missing in 2013, December 29th, in his 2002 Hyundai Elantra. And this is not the first time that we were here looking for Donnie. Today we've got thunder and lightning, and those weather elements are definitely against us. We also have Yvonne, who has been looking for eight years, and that is Donnie's sister. Her heart has not forgotten her brother. And I mean, this one really touches me that if there's one case, I mean, I want to solve all the cases, Doug, but this is one I definitely want to solve today. And if you guys have not checked out episode one of our search here in Lake of Ozark for Donnie Irwin, stop what you're doing, check that out right now. With that, we're gonna go start our search. For families who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. This is my number one spot. I mean, this is the reason why we come back. Well, let's catch that last hour of daylight. Let's identify if this is our location. And if it is, then we can either pre-rig it and just be ready for tomorrow, talk to the sheriff, and just pull, you know, bring Donnie home tomorrow. Let's just meet down there and get right to it. After uh, basically assessing our footage and our search that we did prior on this case, we realized that there was a pretty critical area of waterway that we did not get to. When we were here previously, we searched the lower region. Jacob went and searched the lower portion of the dam with the sheriff's escort. However, he could not get up above on the top of the dam area, which is exactly where we're going to and is our main point of interest in the search tonight. <laughs> The, the roads are blown off. I can't, I got to go all the way back to town and back around. Are you, you're serious? Yeah, the roads on this side are completely blown out by the river. Oh no. We can't even get near where we need to go for the night. There's storms have just been massive in the area over the last few days. And we have severe storms moving in again tomorrow. We have the dam that's raging right where we need to search. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to do this right now. You know, if, if the water is so vicious at the moment that if we put our boat in this close to the dam and there's any motor failure whatsoever, we're done over the dam. Uh, yeah, it's a life or death situation really quickly. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go back to Mindy's house. We're all gonna regroup there and try to try to put our heads together to see what it is that we can do. To, and if or not, we can even move forward with this. So the, the big issue that I've got is we came down Tunnel Dam Road over here. Mm -hmm. We came into this little spot that's supposed to cross over the river here. Well, they've had a lot of rain coming in. We were following the Yaman in and I mean, it was just like completely washed out. So we were talking to another gentleman after we left over the gas station. And he said, in order to get down here, take this whistle road. Mm -hmm. And if you follow this to the north, you come over here to the grapevine here and then straight up you check that out. We have no rivers or anything to cross that we can drop into it right off of 54 right there. Okay. And it's just a straight shot. Cause you came in kind of to the, I came in on you and that's where we couldn't, well, you came in on this road. I came in on you. Um, there, there's water. There's lots of water down there. There's two or three yeah. rivers. Well, we, uh, Jacob and I crossed 
two rivers. There's no river here. There, there's a lot of water there. There's a lot. Well, there is now because it's flooding over the roads. That's what I think it is. It's uh, the smaller creeks. I have a concern. Oh, so you have a video of the dam. Safe, yes. Yeah, safety concern. This is what I have. We didn't search anything within the orange buoys right here. Mm -hmm. And so my main area of concern is Donnie comes up here on top of the dam, goes in right here, and now he's going to float for a few moments and get wedged up right against the dam right here. Nobody has sonar this section at all. It is, you know, I don't know what they call these dams, head, head dams or whatever. It's low head dam. Low head dam. So the problem is you go into those low head dams and you've seen it. It's going to tumble you there. And even with a life jacket on, it can pin you under. That's a big issue. Being Swiss Water Rescue, they're, they're, we do have throw bags in the boat. We can have a spotter at the bottom, but you're going to have to catch that rope. And if you don't catch it, I mean, you just have to know if we're going over, like, you cannot let go of the big boat. Like, like that's that's your safety line. You're holding on to the big boat. Or we're making you run nervous. Yes, you yes. I, 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 Only because but, I seen the force that was going on. Can we punch? Shoot is going to be your time that things are going to slow down. All right, let's eat. Read up in the morning and we'll do everything we can. We are now above Tunnel Dam here in the Lake of Ozarks. We're actually at the boat ramp we were at where the lily pads were in the first episode. We've searched this area. However, we're gonna put in, we're gonna go up to the boat ramp that's up ahead of here that we have not searched yet. That's actually the side Donnie is from. So his home is on that side. Yeah. And typically in these cases where we're working possible they're not gonna cross over a river. On this spot, there's a road that goes all the way up and around the corner. But it's protected. It's gated. There's cameras there. We're gonna try to see if we can side scan around these buoys on that um, yeah. barrier line and see if we can maybe see an object. We're ex suspecting that he could be possibly over here by this other boat ramp. And I'm casting 150 feet in either direction. I'm literally getting pulled in. We're dealing with a lot of current right here above the dam. I'm actually running sideways. Yep, yep. You're doing a good job, 12 feet. We're casting like almost to the wall. I'm casting 216 feet in either direction, but it's it's just, um, it's not giving us the reading we need that far. I'm, I'm getting a good 110 feet of decent reading into that protected barrier there. Really dangerous right here the water here is raging over that dam. So we're completely at the mercy of the motor of this boat. Let's What's that it. back there? What? There was an anomaly that was detected on side scan. Under normal depths, we would consider a potential car. However, it's gonna be over here near the ramp where we know it's only two or three feet deep, but because it came up, we're just gonna get an extra scan on it to make sure that uh, it's not in some rare hole that's right there in shallow water. Yeah, just keep it straight, keep it straight, keep it straight. And this anomaly should either be right under us or right. I don't see it. It's just it's just too shallow. Oh. Well, there's that there's that log down there that may have casted that shadow. Yeah, we're on yeah, the other side. Yeah. 
we come back under the impression that what we missed with this search after analyzing the footage was above the dam. Yep. Um, and being here boots on the ground in real time, we, however, don't really suspect that as much as we did. It doesn't seem feasible. So what did we still miss something? What did we miss? Or where did we not go, should I say? So this location above Tunnel Dam, minus the inside of the protective area, is clear. We were able to go up to the other access points, which are just up from here, which I described earlier we didn't get to the last time we're here. This one here really is more of an accident location but this is you know the one and only within the five mile radius of his house that we've not covered yet so i'm really glad that the uh, homeowner gave us permission to get on this one today and you know if we do find him here it could be more in an accident you know which is a better way to think of yes. what may have happened yeah look at that we're only at five feet right here Oh, those fish on the left are showing up really nice, aren't they? But just simply not deep enough. Right, so nothing's gonna come in over here. Uh, at least we're getting deeper though. We're at six feet, eight feet now. Almost nine feet. But this one over here takes us away from any accident, nor a really potential access in my opinion. Got a big tree down there. But what if, Nine years ago, we know that that trailer wasn't there. But what if by chance, this is a on purpose location and he came around to this side over here. You know, we're now at 10, 13 feet. Now I have something on the down there and I was turning at the same time. You see that Carson? I'm gonna bring it back over to the left, but I was turning at the exact same moment that something big popped up and it could just be a tree. Yeah, it was just a big uh, ball of bait fish is what it was. Every body of water that we get in and on, we believe in each one. Otherwise, we wouldn't just be getting on the body of water just to make content. We're always so hopeful that we are going to solve whoever it is we're looking for, for every piece of body, you know, for every body of water that we get into. And that's how it is right now. You know, it's like, something starts popping up on sonar and you hold your breath and then it's like ah no it's just another log it's just another stick it's a it's a bait ball of fish and so then you look ahead it's like all right well i still have three quarters of the lake here and i'm so hopeful that maybe in this three quarters of the lake we're going to find something because we've already covered that portion of it but i have a feeling that as we head to this side of the lake you can see the trees coming out into the water and so that really changes the hopefulness of, all right, well now we're taking out that quarter, that half section of the lake. And then your hopes start to diminish again. It's like, all right, now you start thinking ahead. What body of water are we gonna head to next? What is our next game plan? Well, I don't have to think that far ahead yet because I still have half the lake that's still left. Are we gonna be successful in this? But now that we're down to two and a half feet of water here, two feet, less than two feet, you know, it's coming up 18 inches. Then you kind of get sad. You get sad again. Well, that clears this one. So we're gonna need a game plan then as to where we head next. Let's just bring this back. We're, we're dealing with the what we know on past experience. We have a veteran who's in pain, is an amputee. The people that we find, they're not going to go through a whole lot of effort. They're looking for the boat ramp, they're looking for the easy access. I've made a decision, I'm not getting out of my car, I'm not opening up any gates, I'm not going through any fences. This is just outside our, our five mile, keeps us on the D, 
also with the conversation that he had with a friend or with Jeremy, like, hey, I'm going to drive down D until I hit water. My brother, my oldest brother and the neighbor said it, that that was what he said. I'm going to go down D until I get water. Okay. Which then this is our D turns into tunnel dam and drops us down here. So we have, this is still on. Now with this though, Doug, you know, this then takes us to where he is coming down across the river and back across. Okay. It's not, it's, this is no longer my, hey, we really have to, but it's a, it's still on the list of. Right. In your five mile radius, we've included, it includes Ha Ha Tonka. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have looked at Tunnel Dam, mm -hmm. but we have not looked around the actual Ha Ha Tonka Cove area. So we come out, we come off the road, it's nice and quiet all the way into Ha Ha Tonka. We know that he takes Missouri D quite often. This keeps us on this side of the lake. We've not searched it. I know this area well right there because that's where my aunt lives and that's where we have our family reunions. And, and, and that was Donnie's favorite of all places to go. So, so, so now we have like a super significant personal reason tying him into this area. Right. That, that is a, that, with that being said, that's the number one location. These walls have been here longer than nine years. But is this a Bill Simmons situation of coming in, top side, launching off the top, you're gonna make it out there? It, it just doesn't make sense for a car to be there. But yeah, it's, I think it goes to show you never wanna rule anything yeah. out. So it's in the realm of possibilities. You also have the coming down this part and just hitting this in realm of possibilities. Yep, you got area down there. Yeah, there's there's no, no barriers at all down there. Barriers straight into the water. Something took out the old stone here. That is a new stone that this was busted out. This was busted out. That one they were able to, to repair because repair, it just fell down off the end. But this one was completely busted out. They had to replace the entire block on that one. And it's not mortared in with the rest of them. It's, co it's uh, cocked in, and if you look at the age of this caulking as well, it's pretty aged. That's a potential that meets the criteria of something that's been repaired. And there's no wall you have to drop off of here either. Yeah. So you can come flying down there. You can tell by the, the how this rock is weathered at the bottom here. So the water's up to this step, usually. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're talking about another three to four feet of height out here. Easily. Well, and you can see the mold on the, the concrete, how high it gets. Did you see that on LifeScope? No, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I think we just went over a car in LifeScope. Like I just saw like the, the bumper. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you, dude. I swear to God. I was resetting this other sonar over like, just Just back up. I'm backing up right now. Seven feet. Like, I don't, I don't know if I just saw something or... Right there? What is that? No, oh, this rock. is rock. Not telling it. I saw the end of it, so I thought maybe it was like just the bumper. Yeah. Coming back to what we know, where did Donnie live? Where did Donnie work? Where was he known to go? And what is that five mile radius from there? We then started talking more with, you know, Yvonne about the, okay, yeah, they lived in Kansas City, but even as children, this is their stomping ground. What is most memorable to them within that five mile radius for somebody of the situation that he's going to, we've not found his vehicle, so that's why we're looking in the water. That brings us to the Ha Ha Tonka. I mean, we have the castle up on the hill. We have this park over here where they spend a lot of time. I was a little girl. You could see that whole castle. Oh. It's deteriorated over the years. Yeah, I saw it, but half of it was... The, the water tower is there, but this was not here. This mm -hmm. was all open, and there was a, a walking trail. So Donnie used to hike from my aunt's house right there through the woods, to get up to that, to the tower in the castle. I have black and white pictures from a camera that you looked down in. 
<laughs> he took the pictures off of. I still wow. have a hammer. Wow. This was our playground. Yeah. Every little passing, every foot is a holding of the breath, is a hopeful of not just me being able to solve this for Yvonne and her family, but she's also right there on the shore. That every time that I stop or slow down or turn around, you know, her heart is racing, wondering, did he just find Donnie? Do we finally have the answers today that we've been looking for? And I, I can't even explain the feeling of being out here and helping these families in the way that we do. And you don't want to let them down. You being brave enough to be here and, and share Donnie's story also um, has the ability to help so many other people, regardless of what happens, what does or doesn't happen today. I'm glad. You know, yeah. because if it can save somebody else's pain, it's all worth it. At yeah, 100. Even though I still feel pain. Yeah. If it brings peace to somebody else, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So this area I'm gonna rule out. I mean, we're still scanning up, but this is the new ramp that, you know, Donnie was really excited about when he came down here and he was talking with his son about it. You know, they had new parking, they had the new wheelchair accessible ramp that came down to the fishing dock. You know, he wasn't a fisherman, but he did enjoy coming back down here to this area that he knew as a child that he spent a lot of time that this was his stomping ground. And right now I've got something off to the left. Is it what I'm looking for? I don't think so, but we're going to head over there. And while I don't think that this is it, we just want to make sure that we double check it. And it could have just been the way that this bait ball of fish is showing up or there could be something out here. We're gonna find out right now. This is what I was interested in, the way that it was laying and see how like everything's very consistent down here. De definitely not a car. The one thing that always stood out to me in this and you know, in, in your relationship with your brother was that he, you know, no matter what with his wife, he stayed in touch with you. Always. You know, he stayed in touch with you every single day. Us as men, we keep things in. It, we internalize things. And, you know, even when they are that grave, you know, we we, we do. We, we, we're, we're taught like that. We're breeded that. We, we're not supposed to whine or complain. And and he didn't to you know? me. And, and, he, was, and, and, and he, he was a service member. He, he was raised tough. He was bred tough. He was drilled to be tough. Family of military. We felt each other's pain. I know that sounds crazy, but... No, it doesn't at all. You know, it, it was just so real. So what was a, you know, what is that location that Donnie said, you know what, I'm going down Highway D to a body of water that nobody will ever find me. This body of water is right off of D. He's either here or he's in Kansas City. I, know, I, I didn't know he'd only been here for two years. I get that they come up here, but if he's not here, he's in that Missouri River in Kansas City, 100%, 100%. And that's why he said, you weren't gonna find me. Cause nobody's gonna look for him there. He grew up there in the city his entire life. And he knows, he knows that river. He knows he's getting in there. Unless he had money hidden, he didn't have no gas. He, who knows? How long knows. does it take to get from here to Kansas City? I, nobody knows how much gas he had. You know what I mean? That's just speculation. You know, and Kansas City ain't that far. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's not that far. At least on the map, it didn't look that far. I'd say 30 well, miles. He has a, a Hyundai Elantra. Yeah, he gets like car. 25 miles a gallon. We're in eight feet of water, coming around, sneaking past, coming down the trail popping down over the edge, seeing that it's deeper, keeping it on, you know, closer to his home within that five mile radius. And you know, Yvonne, 
She just needs, you know, the answers. She needs to be able to heal and move forward. And I want to give her those answers today. This is clear. And I say that with a, unfortunately, this is clear is how I feel about it. Like I feel very sad about us not finding the car and finding Donnie. Nothing, a couple of tires from like old boat ramps or old boat docks, yeah. as well as like the old barrels that they used to use for boat docks. And that is clean. So then that brings me back to staying on this side of the river, Highway D, the conversation of with a neighbor, I would just drive straight down D until I hit the water. You're never gonna find me. I'm going to deep place, comes back to the bottom side, in my opinion, of tunnel down. So, I, I guess for the moment then, there's nothing that we can do. Um, we gotta come back. Yeah. <laughs> my, my three main areas in this, and I feel like they're super problem with the dam, right? Top and bottom. The lake. Yep. If those are clear, the most probable location after that is going to be Kansas City. The only place in Kansas City that I would say that it would be worth if we come to absolutely zero conclusion here, here yeah. would be Lake Tacoma. Lake Tacoma. So you don't think the Missouri River at all? No. Huh. It's another lake. It's, it's not a big, it's not nearly as big as this. Um, but it was a lake that Donnie spent a lot of time at living in Kansas City uh, because they had a lot of places out there where you could fly airplanes and, you know, the electronic planes and, and play frisbee. Don't possibly. you feel, but don't you feel if that was this case, he would have filled up the gas station, taken a fresh pack of cigs. He's driving. It's yeah. possible. It's just possible he did that somewhere else, or it's possible he did it and nobody or saw. It's possible he or, had money in his pocket that nobody knew about. Yeah. The only you thing know? that does go backwards on that is, in order for Donnie to stay alive, we had to take the meds he was on, and he went without. He didn't take any with him. None. Mm -hmm. Zero zilch. Okay. Well, you know, I had that lady contact me from Texas that said. Your brother's alive and well and living in Texas, going by the name of Doc. Right. But he's getting his disability out of the state of Georgia. Well, everybody knows you can't do that. Right, right. You can't live right. in Texas and draw your yeah. security benefits out of another state. Right. You know, so I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't think he had a plan to restart his life somewhere else. I really don't. I am a firm believer that if he would have done that, he would have called and anybody that was involved with my brother and his wife during that time are now dead. And again, and I'm not trying to throw stones, you guys, but I had no help in the beginning from law enforcement. None. They didn't investigate this as foul play. They didn't. It took them two months to get his DNA so that I could get him into NamUs. You know, they just, it was horrible. Had things been done different, this could be all a different turnout but I didn't have the support that I have now. Yeah. You know, and that's why I thank you guys so much for all that you do, not just for me. Please don't think just for me, but for everybody that you reach out and you help them. I feel their relief every time I watch your videos. We have not yet found Donnie, but as you know, I told you last time, we're not giving up. We're coming back. We're going to keep brainstorming. Josh and Shannon are gonna start working on this, you know? Uh, Jacob's nearby, so when he passes through, I'm sure, you know, he'll drop his boat in, at, you know, a, a uh, you know, a couple of boat ramps as well. And at the end of the day, we now know he's not here. Yeah, we can keep looking. Mm. We're gonna find him. I know. Okay. I have faith. I do. Or Josh is going to find him. It's just never or as quick as you want it Jacob to be. Is gonna, you know? Somebody's going to find him. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to bring him out. Yeah. Where he deserves to be. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's kind of hard to, you know, 
say that we're wrapping this up because at no point until we actually find, you know, Donnie and on these other cases who we're looking for, it, it's never the end of it. It's never the end of the search. It's the, the reminder of Donnie is still missing as well as all these other people across the U.S. that are missing, that this entire thing is a movement that as we were just having a discussion, it's not about Doug and I or the AWP team coming out here and being the heroes in this. It's about us coming out here as somebody that cares for another family, that spreading the awareness and the message that this, we're putting the story out there so that way maybe somebody else is going to see this from the Ozarks and they're going to be like, oh, I have a fish finder. I'm going to start paying more attention to the water, but not just here in the Ozarks, within your local communities. And so for me, that's the message that I want to spread today, Doug, is the, the awareness to get out there and get involved. And if you don't have the ability for a water search, but you hear somebody that goes missing in your area, you know, it comes back to purpose for me. What is my purpose in life? I don't know. At the end of the day, eventually I'm going to pass away and I just want somebody to remember Jared for the kindness that he gave to others. And I hope that that's the message that we can spread here is think of others and what you can do for them and what is your purpose. And it might just be spending the extra time with your wife or your girlfriend or, or your grandkids and just taking that extra time, realizing that life is short and you never know when it's going to be your time to not leave the house angry with your wife and storming out, but taking that last moment to give her a hug and let her know that you love her, even though you might be a little frustrated with her at that moment in time, because you never know when it's going to be the last time that you're going to see your lost loved one or your, your loved one, you know, that they do become lost or you don't have those answers that we run across quite frequently that these families, they say, all I want to do is know where they're at. I want them to come home. That we have other families that say, you know, I've lost a loved one, but at least I knew they were at. Or the families say, I had a loved one that was lost wherever they're at, underwater or over a ravine, and not knowing for those X number of days or months or years was the most difficult time in their lives. And so I want to again remind everybody, we're nobody special. We're just a couple of guys that decided to get an RV and travel across the U.S. with a couple of, you know, other characters that said, yeah, we'll go ahead and film this for you. And we appreciate you being here with us to help us spread that message and the movement and to do what you can to be involved simply by watching, subscribing, which is free. If you have a few extra dollars, there's a link in the descriptions of these videos as well. You know, buy us a cup of coffee, buy us, you know, help us buy a tank of gas. Everything is expensive as we're out here on the road. But whatever your role and your capacity in this, remember that AWP is an entire movement around the entire world that you're now a part of just by watching this.